The stock market is starting to melt down. And since I missed last week's report, we've got a lot to cover and I'm just gonna dive right into it. Now, if you remember last week's video, I had a lot of criticisms for a CNBC contributor who posted his Elliott Wave analysis in the market, had it mapped the S&P to go all the way to 480. And I had a lot of criticisms for that, especially when it came to his fundamentals that were backing up that trajectory for the market. So today, I'm gonna go over mine. And here's what I'm seeing for my Elliott Wave analysis. Now, I'm not gonna go super heavy in the details of explaining Elliott Wave analysis or how you do it because I saw a huge drop off when I started doing that in previous videos. So we're not gonna get bogged down in super heavily detailed technical analysis because apparently a lot of you find that extremely boring and I don't wanna be boring. I'm the young, cool guy talking about stocks. Hopefully that wasn't too cringe. Anyway, so I'm looking at a B Wave uh com completion here at the 430. i had potential for this to go to 450 uh, especially if we saw breath could uh continue to build in the market if we look at you know like kre which is you know going to be your etf for the regional banks it's probably the weakest sector in the market right now right with all the banking issues that we had we can see that we've seen some buyers step in uh over here and it's you know it's looking a little bit better at 63 you're still almost getting overbought without the market even getting to th uh to uh, 450. i just want to interrupt myself real quick when I, I was reviewing the finished video and i realized i didn't really clarify why i'm talking about this when i'm talking about kre and regional banking in general i'm looking for signs that the breadth in the market is looking a bit healthier and i'm using regional banks which were one of the most beaten down sectors uh, for you know this year so far as a sign that hey some of these smaller stocks are starting to recover a bit you could also alternatively look at the russell uh, iwm um, which has also been underperforming the nasdaq for signs that the breath is returning i'm using kre because it's the most extreme example and if i start to see confidence in these i can then maybe say that there's more confidence in the bull market but if it's not there then i don't think that that breath is improving and i don't think that we actually have a bull market and so it, it doesn't still look that strong to me at all especially if we start breaking down the different time frames here i mean the one hour already looks like it's turning over you're not breaking any any you know having any serious breakouts here so i'm still skeptical that this is significant um and i don't see breath really returning to the market especially when we look at the semiconductor stocks that have all been rolling over nvidia amd both of these have been pretty profitable uh, i have my nvidia shorts are now coming back to me it's been a bit of a bumpy ride here for nvidia what's been a lot easier to trade has been amd we've seen a a lot less volatility in these contracts. I am still looking in the short position. I just rolled those contracts. We had like nice, nice 60% returns today. And so I'd be looking for a, a break below this 115, probably on that move uh, and that, that new short term low uh, and that breakdown. I will then likely sell some contracts. I'm looking for a visit to the 112 though. And you know, this would probably go to, you know, almost, almost maybe touch into the 111s and and then i would look into exit those shorts and kind of reevaluate what i'm thinking for the market and i think that'll also play out for the spy now for the c wave that i think is going to develop to the downside for the spy i just want to draw your attention to this this right here and that was a horrible circle let's get a better circle to so this right here when you had this dramatic sell-off after this a wave hitting the same key 0.618 retracement level on this really long time frame. Now remember, the larger the time frame is, usually the more accurate these Fibonacci levels are. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that we could have a very high probability of seeing a similar downturn occur right now in this market. And when we're thinking about what's also coming around the corner over the next week or two, we do also have the interest rate decision coming out from the Fed. And remember, the market's still on fire nvidia and a few other handful of stocks have carried this market to crazy much higher than i expected i think much higher than most people expected the ai hype has been crazy however the fed has signaled that they were going to pause but then the market blew up and went nuts and the fed is trying to fight inflation if you're trying to fight inflation you don't want everyone feeling like they are stupid rich from stock market. Remember the stock market is so tied to the actual economy. After Nvidia stock hit these crazy highs, we saw what 30 headlines from the CEO announcing new things or new and new partnerships that were going to be coming out and being built with Nvidia, trying to justify the evaluation of this stock. Why would they do that? 
Well, they do that because so much of what they make is tied to the stock performance. So much of the real economy is tied into the stock market performance. So much of government taxes, by the way, the amount of money they actually collect is tied to the stock market. So it's important to realize the significance that in the, the interrelationships that we see between the actual economy and the stock market. And one of those also being the wealth effect, where if stocks are really high, people feel really rich and they go out and they buy lots of stuff because they feel like they're loaded, even though it's not real money in their pocket and it's money that has risk. It is in the stock market, which is crazy volatile right now. They still feel, you know, pretty rich. So keeping all that in mind, make sure you got these on the front of mind for the market. Okay. So tomorrow morning, likely when this video comes out, we'll have this initial jobless claims numbers. Now, these numbers have been coming in under forecast, which you might think is a good thing, okay? Even though last our last print was actually like the largest we've increase we've seen in a month in a while, showing that there is some more people filing for benefits, unemployed benefits, this number is increasing. Despite that, it's still below expectation. So the Fed can still paint it as a good thing, right? What that does though, is it gives them more room to hike in June. And lots of people think that the Fed has paused in June, all right? The bond market's pricing in cuts. I don't think we're gonna get cuts, but you know, the idea that we're gonna pause seems less and less uh, likely. So keep that in mind, this number will be big, right? If we get a big surprise above the forecast here, that might give an indication of a pause. It actually might be taken as a good thing for the market. Uh, and then for Tuesday, next Tuesday, June 13th, keep this one on the calendar, okay? Inflation rate, core inflation rate, we're gonna wanna see all of this, okay? We got some some sketchy data with the PCE, and so we just wanna make sure that uh, these are pretty low, right? So if, if these are hot prints heading, and, you know, you don't have to wait for this interest rate decision. If we get hot, if we get, you know, really good jobless claims, and then we get really high inflation, mm, you know, that might just give them more room to tighten. Now remember, we tightening effects don't take six months to play out, but you know, the recency bias of them, you know, they're gonna take it as a now. So, you know, we'll see how this actually goes for the Fed interest rate decision, and that's Wednesday, okay? That's June 14th, so keep that in mind, okay? That's a week from today, we get our interest rate decision. And I think the market's already gonna get a bit worrisome about what happened. You know, even this even this initial jobless claims being Thursday morning, that sell-off we saw on the close, this is likely why. This is people being skittish of that data report coming out, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? We got tomorrow morning, you're going to keep an eye out. Tuesday, you're going to want to keep an eye out. And then Wednesday, we're going to get our actual interest rate decision. And then I'm also going to be paying close attention to these economic projections. I'm not going to say it speaks to those projections right now because we'll talk about that. Um, likely Wednesday afternoon, I'll put a video out covering the economic projections and the Fed press conference. And to finish up today's video, I'm going to do rapid fire with some stocks. Target. Okay, we've all heard about Target. I don't know how you could not have heard about Target. It was all over the news, all over the social medias, right? They started making clothing targeted towards nine, baron, nine binary and transgender children, right? Weird decision to make. And I'm not talking about politically, I'm just talking about financially, right? You're literally making a targeted marketing plan towards the 0.00001% of the population right it's just a weird decision to make so we've also then seen the stock sell off whether it was politically or just because it was a financially weird decision to make you know i'm going to reserve my own opinions i definitely have them but we're going to just talk about the finance right this stock just now just it looks so historically cheap now this could come down further maybe we actually see this stock retest the COVID highs about 122 i've already started nibbling on it um you know the breadth of the weekly still looks to the downside but we're already at a 32 rsi you know if we go to the daily chart we can see we're already starting to rebound for me that's we're getting close to there. So I bought some stocks, also bought some long-term options here. I know some of the other traders in Discord bought leaps on target stock as well. I don't think it's the worst decision. I know retail is going to be weak, but I think the market's starting to press it. To, to price in some of those uh, recession downturns on those stocks. Another stock that got beaten down was Bud uh, Anheuser-Busch. First of all, Bud Light's not even the only product that they offer. And most, you know, the people who are upset by this probably don't even realize that. So uh, I I think that this is also becoming historically cheap. This is also another stock where I think that this is going to be, you know, it looks like a good buy. Historically cheap right here. And we can see that the T-Team squeeze is all in the RSI are both recovering 
and buyers are coming back in for the stock with some good volume as well. So, you know, this looks like confirmation that the bottom is in. And uh, this is another one where I haven't set up some options yet, but I did do some buying in the stock. I probably will look at some options here shortly. Coinbase is another one. I'm going to do a short about this. It'll probably be out before this video is out. So if you haven't seen it, make sure that you don't are subscribed to the channel and you check out that short. Uh, I'll cover this in detail, but I don't think the SEC can win. I think Gensler's got to go. Um, and I, I think uh, that Coinbase will win this lawsuit. I think that, it, you know, it was definitely um, some FUD, you know, scared some people out of the stock um, for sure. But we've seen buyers step back in. This still looks a little bearish. It looks like we could get some downside here um, right at the bottom there, right at the gate. Immediately bought some calls, though, made some good money. If we see more big drops here, I'm going to be bullish on them and I'm going to be a buyer there. I'm going to be buying dips on Coinbase. Um, you know, maybe not in everyone's risk appetite to be doing that, if I'm just being honest. But for me, I like like it. Another one, and this doesn't just apply to CCJ. This is just going to be the one I've talked about because I've been trading and following the stock for so long. If you're following this channel, you know that. Trading view, for whatever reason, uh, got rid of my last charting. But if you're in the Discord, you can always, of course, find these charts in here. I'm posting these all the time. Um, and I got to do a few more tonight as requested by some of our subscribers. So I'll be posting more of those soon. Um, but I was looking for this breakout to the upside. You know, we have this wedge developing right here. I was expecting this to come down before it went up. Instead, it just went ahead uh, and blew right through. We get that breakout. I'm now shorting this, um, looking for, this is a trade that I do pretty consistently uh, on the initial breakout. We usually have a pullback or we'll touch the support line and then, and then we'll launch. So I, on those breakouts, I usually short those with options just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't put a lot on the trade, but this is a, this is a, a type of trade that I do a lot. Um, but I want to get long here. When this touches this, I think we could start to see that super cycle in commodities and for uranium companies, for different utility companies, CEG is going to be another one uh, that's definitely on my radar, but I'm watching a lot of the uranium stocks. These look like great setups here. Um, I, I, I'm loving this. So there's a few stocks that I like right now. Um, I also want to say, and I've been saying this across the social media as I have been loading up my uh, biotech holdings. Uh, CRISPR for me is a big one. ArcG, another big one. Um, just, I think AI will probably end up solving the next big leap forward for biotech. And that's just simply because you got these giant databases with all this information or different research teams all over the place. As soon as you uh, get an AI that can hold all that information and immediately put it all together, a lot of this is like puzzle pieces, right? And it takes humans so long to actually communicate to one another oh, this actually, this piece fits over here, or this research correlates to that research. If you just dump that all to an AI and just program it to solve puzzles and teach it some, you know, genetics, it's crazy to me that that wouldn't lead to some big innovations in the space. And I think the next big leap forward for genetics, for biotech stocks is going to come from AI. So for me, I've been loading up these stocks in my long term into what might be a drawback in these stocks in the short term. But overall, I just don't see them getting as much attention as the AI stocks. I know it's more complex. A lot of people don't get it. These type of investments scare them. You know, if you want, you know, a more broad uh, coverage of the sector, you can buy ArcG, you can buy IBB, which I believe is the, yeah, that's the biotechnology ETF, uh, you know, but I love biotechnology right now. And, you know, that's a, that's a three, five year hold probably for me um, on those. And that's going to be it for this video. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you ring that bell because we got a bunch of fun podcasts coming out. I'm going to do one with another trader in the discord who does option selling a lot different from buying. I've talked about him a lot in different videos. Going to finally collaborate a little bit with him. We're also going to do some with some other YouTubers that kind of do what I do. We also have a, a, a day trader who, who specializes in small caps, uh, which is different from my trading style. And he's also a power lifter. So we'll probably talk about that as well. Bodybuilder, who's also a stock analyst. We are, I already did one about his, um, his reports that he does for uh, Seeking Alpha. And we'll do a podcast together as well. Lots of cool stuff. Lots of great info that I think you're going to want, but you're not going to really find anywhere else in the way that I do my videos. I think I do a good job of getting right to the point. I'm going to do the same thing when we do this podcast. All right. So I hope you enjoy the content I make. Please leave a like if you do, and I'll see you in the next video.